fight talking shit before we ever play KU. That's big balls, man. Like we no did, we in Kansas, they hadn't won in years, 50, 40 years this streak had going on. And you're talking like we had won last week. Right. So in the moment, I was pissed at Mike because I didn't know if we was gonna win. Right. But as you look back, sure. Mike had balls and he had confidence for all of us. Sure. And that kind of that kind of paid me throughout my career, believing stuff like that. Mike saying stuff like that made yeah. me easily one of the most confident guards in the 12 as I continue. Well, I only have one other thing to say, and then I'm gonna let those guys ask you questions. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy you're in. Congratulations on that. Appreciate it. And in part because when I travel, so many people have said for so long. When are they going to put Jacob Pullen in? Now I don't have to tell him anymore. No, You're they, in. Yeah, I'm getting the whole thing. They're going to put my jersey <laughs> up. It's really been me. Gene Taylor has done a great job of reaching out yeah. to me and talking to me. My schedule hasn't allowed it. Right. And I wouldn't want to do it any other way than a KU or Texas, a big Monday, big big time Big 12 game at no home. Doubt. Like, I wouldn't want to just do it the wrong yeah. way. And again, I want certain people to be able to make it, so I would want to be able to plan it out. Yeah. And Gene, like I said, Gene has done a great job of keeping me informed, talking yeah. to me. And as my schedule clears up, I promise it's going to happen over the next few years. I'll be here, and I can't wait for it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, it deserves to be up there, and congrats on this one. Appreciate it, Wyatt. Thanks a lot. <laughs> right, here's one for you, Jake. Uh, do you think your scoring record at Kansas State will ever be broken? Not with the transfer portal. At, at one point, when I first graduated and I seen Marcus playing, Marcus Foster, I was like, shit, that, that boy can <laughs> score. Like, and he got to it right away, because as a freshman, I only averaged like eight or 10 points, maybe nine points, but I played with good players, so I didn't get right to it. Marcus got right to it, and then when Nigel first got in, I was like, man, Nigel can score. Like, But you know, like I say, this transfer portal, I might have this record for 100 years, man. Like, you know, the, the loyalty thing is, is not the same. And I remember as a freshman, me and Frank had some big fights, and I was really thinking about leaving. I mean, when Mike Bray at Notre Dame was calling, I had a lot of schools calling, Sean Miller, like, and I was really contemplating leaving because I didn't know if me and Frank were going to be able to mesh. And I remember that summer we talked, and he looked me in my face, and he said, if you put in the work, you'll play basketball. If you think that I'm going to give it to you, you'll sit on the bench. And from that point on, I put in the work. I did everything that he asked me to do, and I believed in his system. I believed in what he was telling me, and we moved forward that way, and it was a great relationship after that. But I think with the way college basketball is now and the way that everybody wants instant success, and if you don't have it, you're not willing to sit, you're not willing to work, you're just going to leave. So with that being said, if we, you know who has a chance? Clint, young boy, the one that's coming in, Costello. He's really okay. good. I watched him play. He gives me loyalty vibes. And playing for Clint Stewart, I would believe he's one of the most loyalist kids in this day of time. So if somebody can do it, he got four years to do it. I believe he might, unless he goes to the NBA early. He doesn't give me unhappy transfer vibes. So with college basketball now, I don't think somebody walks in and plays four years and puts up 10 to 20 points a game over four years and stays at the same place. Now you're leaving for more success. You're going to the big time schools. You get paid for it too. Now, I can't say if somebody was to walk around and offer me a half a million dollars to go play basketball at 18, I say no. So those are the differences now. So I don't think someone beats it. But like I say, if I was 18 in college and I had a great year and somebody told, came here and said, hey, I got a half a million dollars for you. I don't know if I stay at Kansas State. You know, I love it and I'm grateful for it, but the times have changed now. And a lot of these guys got to do what's best for them and their family. So I, I can't really be upset with it either. So look, looking back, do you think you played at a good time where you can be remembered as a four-year yes. guy that everybody loves you? Or do you wish you could have gotten paid and not be suspended for, you know, taking for, a shirt for getting a shirt at Dillard's, uh -huh. yeah. Times have changed for sure. But, now nah, if I could do it over, I'm still a four-year guy. It's just who I am. The, uh, I I wasn't dirt poor growing up, so money doesn't change me. Money doesn't, money doesn't make me move. I play basketball because I love it. It's an opportunity for it. Now I do it for the financial standpoint to take care of my family, but at that point, I would have did it again. Now, I'm mad, I am mad that NILs wasn't around. I would have feared a beer would have cleared a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> a million dollars easily in t-shirts and sales. I would have cleared that, but hindsight, I played four years. College was amazing. It was real college at that time, real fans. It was Like I say, loyalty was the biggest thing. Didn't matter. It was people from KU who loved me but wouldn't speak to me just because of the situation, and I respected it. And now, like I said, you can play at K-State and go to KU next year if you play good enough. 
that just don't sit right with me. That's not the, that's not, that's not how rivalries work for real. Like, you know, I, I love Sharon to this day. Coach Self is amazing, but rivalries is rivalries. And nothing could have made me put on KU jersey. Now, there's a price for everything. So some of these guys would probably go to KU next year if they paid more. It's just how it works. So I think I played in the right era. I'm happy with my era. I think that basketball was dope at that point. Really aggressive, really physical. We could talk shit. We could do a lot of things that now is just not the same. But I'm still in tune. I still watch it. Like I say, I'm a big fan of Tang and everything that's going on over here. I'm, I'm actually going to go over there after this and finish watching them work out and stuff like that. So I, I appreciate it. I want them to get all of the money they can. But just two different eras and two different basketball versions of basketball to me. How about your pro career? How do you, uh, how do you feel about that? And when, uh, when you play overseas, did you kind of get into the different countries' cultures and everything? Or was it strictly you go there to play ball? As I got older, it turned into more like a hired hit man. I would pay me, I'll show up and score anywhere you ask me to score. When I was younger, you know, I played in Barcelona. I played in some big, big clubs. I got records in countries now that kids probably see me and think I'm their version of Steph Curry. So, I mean, it was fun. It was, I learned Spanish. I could speak Italian. I understand Serbian, Croatian, Russian, so many languages. So I've picked up on cultures. It's been, it's been amazing, but like I say, life is life, and when I get to come home, I miss it, you know. And to this day, I'll still, like I say, right now, financially, I love it. I still go play because I'm not done, but now that I am getting older, I'm closer to retiring, and I, I just, I miss being home. I mean, I'm a dad. Like, there's certain stuff that's becoming more important than basketball, and as I get closer to that day, it's, it's closer to being over the more I wake up and I think about it every day. What K-State game do you hear the most about from – you know, fans, when they say, hey, I remember this game most, which one comes up? Uh, most of the time it's the Shriek. I think the Shriek is one of the biggest games. Most of the fans really love the Xavier Xavier game. Yeah. Um, more people my age prefer the BYU game against Jimmer because yeah. that was a big game. My personal favorite game that a lot of people never know, Alabama, when I broke the 1,000-point record. I was in the zone, man. I, I watched that game the other day, maybe – a month ago with my brother, he came to my house and he had it on DVD and we watched it on my PlayStation. I think I outscored Alabama in the first half. I had like 20 points and they had 15, 14. I had like six steals, five assists. Finished the game with like 38, seven or something like that. But I just remember feeling like the game was moving in slow motion. And a lot of fans didn't see it because I think it was on like regular TV. It wasn't even a nationally televised game. But I just remember the game being so slow and I was guarding well. I just controlled every aspect of that game. And that's probably one of my favorite games that I played. Kel Torrance on that team, Jermichael Green, Alabama was supposed to be good, but we just really destroyed him. It was right after we beat UNLB too. So I felt like as a team, we was in a great rhythm. And I just, like I say, the, the game just moved slow for me that game. And that's one of the few games I remember where anything I wanted to do, I could do. Which Passing season was that? My junior year, 2010, 2009, 2010. We played, yeah, we played Alabama, in Mobile, right? Alabama. It was right after we beat UNLB. We had just got ranked. Like I said, I just remember the game being so slow. And I remember Frank telling me stuff, and it was just like, like I said, it felt like I was on TV or something. Like, I would get in the lane and I could make what pass I when every shot felt good. I'm seeing their plays before I got a steal for a fast break layup. Like, a, the game, that was one of the few games. The Jimmer game and other games, I played good. But that game, I just felt like I pick and choose everything I wanted to do that game. That's probably one of my favorite games. About, was it 36, 38 against KU your senior year at home? Yeah. What was, what the Valentine's right Day Massacre is a, it's a, it's a hell of a game, too. That That's one of the games where the ball just went in. No matter what I did, I felt like I couldn't miss. Like, you know, except for free throws, which is crazy. I felt like I should have had 50 if I made all my free throws. But <laughs> anything else I shot went in. And that was one of my that was one of the games where I had to make a choice. I remember we were losing. I just lost to Colorado. Frank was upset. Bad span in the locker room. And I just really felt like I had to do something to to rally us. And that game was a big game for me as well. What was the most Frank uh, Frank ever got on you? The most Frank ever got on me freshman year after we beat KU. Freshman year we beat KU. The next game we played Missouri at Missouri. I made a jumper and I no, I made a pass. I threw a behind the back pass to Bill or Mike and it went out of bounds. They should have called it by the way. Went right through his hands. Frank screamed at me probably for about seven minutes. The the play was going on. We had turned the ball over four times. He was still on the bench screaming at me. I don't think I played the rest of the game. And I remember after the game, that was part of the time where mentally as a young kid, I'm thinking like, man, I don't want to be here. I don't like this coach. 
And after the game, I remember asking Delonte, like, I just had 20 against the best team in the world while I'm not playing. And he was like, because you're still thinking about you had 20 against the best team in the world. You wasn't worried about Missouri. And after that, mentally, I had to grow up again. I had to figure out what Frank meant about growing up and being ready to play and not living in the, not living in the past, then staying in the moment. So that was one of the times where Frank really got on me and I wasn't sure if I could handle it, but mentally it made me tough because I figured out what he meant by that point. Well, you got through it. I remember, yeah, I I remember, did. remember when you were a senior, you were yelling at people yourself. Exactly, that's what so. I said. So it was it was a change of, it was a change in the guards, but at, at that point I didn't get it and Frank could get to me, but as I got older I figured it out. I knew what he meant. I knew what the hard work meant. You know, if you can ask Frank since day, I believe that even though I wasn't the most athletic or wasn't the best player, I had to be one of the most competitive players I ever had. Because everything for me was winning. I didn't care about anything else, whether it was drills, weight room. I had to be first. I had to win. And that was just a competitive nature. You said you want to have the ceremony in the next few years with your jersey. Is there a time frame, ideally, you'd like to get it done? Uh, just, I, I believe that over the next few years, I should be done playing basketball. So once I'm done playing basketball, that gives me a, a more free range to be here during the basketball season. And that's when I would want to do it. I wouldn't want to do it. Like I say, football season or any other time, I would want to do it for a KU home game, a Texas home a game where I know that crowd is going to be sold out. It's going to be appreciated. Uh, an atmosphere that I love, that I've been in plenty of times that, you know, it feels like a real, like, you know, like Dr. Gonna do. That's what I want. I want to be Dr. Gonna do. I want to do preseason. I want to do a uh, cross conference against them. And, uh, I need it to be a, a game. So, yeah. So hopefully we I'll talk to Gene and figure it out. But over the next you know two years, three years, I should be able to get it done. Do you know where you're playing uh, playing next season? Yet? Uh, yeah, I'm going to Italy again. I signed up Verona. I signed okay. up. I got a one plus one, but you know we'll see how it goes. It's my option. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're about to go work out with the team after this. What are your What are your thoughts on the team coming up this season? I like them. You know, uh, getting uh, Hawkins from Brad it was a good pickup. Amazing kids. If you really watch college basketball, you'll see that he was a big part of that team the last few years. That's one in Illinois with Terry Shannon and those guys. He was a real glue guy, and I think that he could come here and, and really help. You know, he could he could change the culture of how we were last season. He can give us that rebounding that 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 stretch forward that's able to, to play, make, score, rebound, defend. He can do so much. He has so much versatility on the court. And also the transfer from Michigan, Castillo, like you said, we, we got some pieces and Tane should really shock you guys with what he can do anymore. You know, being able to compete last year, going to Elite Eight his first year, it shouldn't really be like, you know, shock. It should be more so like, you know, he's gonna be able to do this. And as long as he's getting a chance to bring guys in that he feel can fit his system, I think he has a good chance of success this year.